going to revisit the concept of doing search on the table um, with some new functionality that is in Visual Builder. So we have a table with some data about employees and we want to add a search at the top. So let's add an input text component up here at the top and we'll title it search. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the data in, in this field and associate it with a new variable that we would call a search variable. Okay, so what we want to do is as we select different values here, we want to filter the table. To do that, uh, the table itself is based on a service data provider. Okay, so we can go over to the service data provider definition in our variable over here. And inside here, we have a filter criteria over here. So let's modify it. So one thing that you'll notice is that we now have a little icon next to it, which allows us to use a builder, okay, to define the condition. So let's add a condition here, and we can simply select from the list of fields, for example, the name, and we want to have the name contain what we have in the search variable, like that. So that would be our initial condition. We can click Save, go back into the UI, and now if we switch into live, if we search, for example, for the SE, we'll get all the employees that have SE in their name. If we search for A, we get all the employees that have A in their name. Okay. So that's the basic search. Of course, you can do more complex conditions. So let's go back into our definition here of the filter criterion. And I'll show you that you can actually add another condition. Okay, so let's do add a condition here. And we can say that we're looking for either the name of the employee or potentially the manager of the employee to also contain the same search variable, like that. Um, so now we have those two conditions. Right now they're with an end, so it would need to match both. We can switch it to be all if we choose the match any. Click save, go back into our UI. And now, for example, if we type S, we'll find either employees who have an S in their name or employees that have an S in their manager name. So let's do SH, for example. And we can see Shai here and Shelly and um, Shelly uh, over here as well. So now there's also the question of what do we do with null values? So that's the last point I'll show you here, which is if you go back into the filter criteria, you can also do groupings of stuff. So if we... Um, go and click here and add a group. We can add a group and say that um, we let's, uh, we can do, for example, either the manager name, okay, uh, contains this search bar, okay, but we also want to show um, all the manager name, okay, sorry, manager, uh, might be null. So let's do equal. And for null, you do it like this, two curly brackets and the word null in there. Okay. So that would give you this condition. We can then remove this condition. And now our condition is basically either, let's click done here, either the name of the employee has the search bar or the manager has the search bar or they have a null manager. So let's go over and click save. Let's see if we can find employees like that. So again, we'll do SH. You can see all the guys whose manager has SH, as well as all the employees that have null for the manager, Okay, even if the employee name doesn't have SH. So this is how you work with a service data provider. On the second page here, I have a situation where we're actually using and um, array data provider. So if I click fetch here, we fetch a list of the employees over here. And this table, if we look at it, it's based on an employee ADP. And this button, when we click on it, it goes over and does an action chain where we go, call the rest endpoint, and then assign it to the variable. Now, if you look at the rest endpoint over here, you can't find the filter criteria over here, but it's actually hidden down here. So if you click here, okay, and you expand this, you would find the filter over here with the criteria over here. And again, you can basically do um, filtering over here, basically using 
right now the old approach. So the old approach would be, for example, to say, I'm looking for the attribute to be name. The operation would be um, containing, for example. And then the value would be, for example, your search variable over here. Okay. Um, so now back in our UI. Okay. Um, if we click um, go live, click fetch, we'll fetch all the employees, put in a value here, SH for example, click fetch, and we're seeing um, some employees added. So this is a common thing that happens. And as you can see, even I do mistakes on this one. And um, when you do the assign variable here into the array data provider, you want to make sure that it's first setting it to empty. So we're getting the result of the rest, setting it to empty, and then putting it into the data variable over here. So again, let's go back into our page, and click fetch, get the initial list, search sh, fetch, and we only get Shelly and Shelly. So that's how you do it with an ADP.